It's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by SunTrust. Learn how SunTrust can help you live for your sunny day at suntrust.com slash my sunny day. And by Coke Zero. You don't know zero till you try it. Now your hosts, Gene Deckerhoff and head coach Leonard Hamilton. Welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. Today we talk Florida State basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. You know that. That's why you found us on the television. Coach, two big ACC games. We've got, uh, as Charles Dickens once said, the best of times and the worst of times. We play <laughs> extremely well at Wake and not as well at Syracuse. Well, I think we played well enough to win at Wake. Uh, we still are in the development stage. and There's a lot of things when we go back and watch the films that we realize we're still improving. We're still kind of coming together. We are getting better. Uh, we, we played very good at Wake, and went, uh, once when we, we got to Syracuse, we played a rested team, been off nine days. They executed very well. We were not at our best. And when you go on the road in the ACC and you're not at your very, very best, and I've said that many times, you know, good things will not happen for you. So uh, we, hopefully we can learn from the good play that we, we, you know, that we displayed at Wake, and then hopefully we can learn from the, the kind of somewhat of the lethargic play that we played at Syracuse. But the good thing about basketball, you can't worry too much about it. you got to move right on to the next game. Twelve games into the ACC season, Florida State has six more remaining before ACC tournament time. On today's show, highlights Florida State, Syracuse, Florida State, Wake Forest, and a chance to beat Benji Bell from Gainesville, Florida. That's coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back to our show. We promised an awful lot of ACC basketball highlights, and we're going to get right to the tape, Coach, and we're going to see Florida State play maybe the best game we've played this year in an ACC game on the road in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Well, the score was not indicative of really how tough the game was for us. I mean, we, we, we won by 21, but it's not really an uh, indica uh, indication of how tightly contested the game was. Uh, we, we, we had spurts in the game where we got out and got some easy baskets here at the beginning of the game. You have Dwayne coming on rebound, taking the ball all the way to the basket. And, and we, we were much better when we out in transition, when we're playing good defense, getting stopped and getting out in transition. Then once again, there's a replay of it again. Once we get the ball moving and we have this good spacing, we have guys in each corner, we have guys running down the middle of the floor, it gives us an opportunity to take advantage of our athleticism. And, and the transition hoops, and you may not score a layup, but you get the ball in the half court and ready for the shoot, and that Malik Beasley buries a three-point shot for the corner. When you have good spacing like what we have there now, you have two guys on the corners, you have uh, X penetrating the ball, uh, both steps back. You know, that was good basketball, good offensive basketball. Once again, here we go. You know, with good spacing, good ball reversal, good execution. But you see the score, as well as we're playing offensive, the score is still 16-15 at this point in the game. Yeah, a nip and tuck ball game. <coughs> six ties of the game. The, the lead changed 15 times in this ball game before we took charge. Clark was running down, and, and, and Devin made a, a, a desperation three there at the end. And sometimes you need a little luck to happen for you. Yeah, Dwayne Bacon lowers his shoulder and drives to the hoop. He's fearless, isn't he? Six minutes to go in the game, and here again, it's a one or two point game. We're working hard. They're working hard. They're executing. Four minutes to go in the half. Uh, we're, da we're down one. Dwayne makes a great play. Gets in there. We go up one. Now, we have a spurt right here at the end of the first half, you know, where we're able to get a four-point lead. We go from four down to four up. With Dwayne Baker now not going to score, but he finds the open guy. Great effort by Boris Bojanovsky. There's no doubt. I think at this particular point, you see we're down two points. We make some plays. We move up to four, an eight-point swing. Here's a, a, a three-point play. Well, now we're still down once, a minute and a half to go. And, and that's the way it is in the ACC. You got to take advantage of these opportunities. Once again, we out in transition. Here we are taking the ball to the basket, getting an easy basket in transition. Now we have a one-point lead. And it's interesting, as well as we played in this particular game, um, there were so many times in the game where the game, where the game could have gone either way. Three Great rebounds. read by X, getting out. But the, the spacing in the transition game allowed him you know, to, to get into the basket and, and get an easy layup. We had guys on different parts of the floor that they have to give attention to. And XRM caps the three-point play. Florida State takes the lead into halftime. And Coach, 37-33, uh, and uh, Florida State here in the second half is going to play great basketball and knock down some important shots to take a big lead in the ballgame. Hustling, deflections, uh, keeping the ball alive, that high energy, uh, those things are what you really, really need. You know, anytime you're playing against an opponent that's capable uh, uh, as Wake Forest, great block by Bo, great transition basket here, good ball movement. 
Beck finishes the deal. Boris Bojanovsky, 11.7 rebounds. You'll take that any game of the week, won't you? A lot of enthusiasm. You can just see the energy. You can just see the the the, the excitement that the players are, 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 are displaying in the particular game. Great unselfish play, great ball movement. Here's X once again, moving the ball, finding. He gets into the lane, sucks the defense in, gets a wide open shot, but then the putback uh, for Brandon uh, was outstanding playing in front of his friends. As well as we're playing, the score once again is 48-48 <laughs> in the middle of the half. But we get some deflections. We get a steal. Uh, now we get us an easy basket as a result of the steal. Uh, a 20, that doesn't look like a 20-point game right there. It, it's 10 minutes to go. We up five. Penetration, finding uh, Jaquez on the baseline. We kept ha we had spurts, and once we got up double figures, uh, it made it easy for us to obviously to extend the lead. Benji Bell, tight game, seven-point game with nine minutes to go. So you wouldn't think. Once again, Benji, you would, you would not think that was a 20-point game when you look at where the score is right now. It was a four-point lead, then back-to-back -back three point shots, up to 10 points, and all of a sudden, Wake starts to get a little desperate right now. We take advantage of that. Absolutely. They're, they're being much more aggressive. Great spacing, great ball movement, and unselfish play coming down the court. Eight, point, eight minutes to go, still an eight-point game. Five Seminoles and double figures. Monte Brandon had the best game of the, his senior season. You mentioned in front of family and friends. I think he had to scramble about 25 tickets or something like that. <laughs> he had to take care of a lot of family to get to that ball game. But here again, it's, it's a two it's a two minutes to go, and we we find ways to extend in the lead. Going to the basket, they're fouling, they're desperate. In the desperation, we hit our free throws, and the lead extended itself to 20, 20 points at the end of the game. Yeah, Florida State taking control of the ball game and uh, late in the game, Michael Saxton, a walk-on, uh, he's a pretty good three-point shooter. And, and so we have an 18-point <laughs> lead now and we're trying to, I think the next play, yeah. we were trying to hold the ball. Yeah. And, and we threw them, let's throw it up so we don't get a turnover and the ball goes in. Uh, yeah, I, saw, I saw your reaction to that. You didn't want Benji. And Benji was just throwing the ball up, but it got nothing but the bottom of the net. And the final margin is Florida State 91, Wake Forest 71. Everything clicked that day, Coach, and a huge road win in Atlantic Coast Conference play and our fourth consecutive win in ACC play. But I, I still want to keep it in perspective is, is the score – was, we won a 21-point game. However, it was a closer game, and I want pe our fans to understand that every game in the ACC can go either way. We This was our day in, in Syracuse and went the other way on us. Well, we saw number three in action, Benji Bell, uh, knocked down three three-point shots, including one that the coach didn't want to go through. Uh, we're going to have a chance to visit with Benji Bell. That's coming up now. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We're talking Florida State basketball, FSU on the road to play Syracuse. We'll have highlights of that game coming up a little later on in the show. But, Coach, uh, just a moment ago, we saw Benji Bell knock down a three, just trying to <laughs> throw the ball up and avoid a, a shot clock fra a fraction. The basket goes in, and it made it a 20-point ball. He went down and apologized to Coach Manning for making that shot at the end. Didn't well, it? we didn't want to kind of rub it in. Sometimes it's just courtesy if you're going to win the game, you up score it, it up by a large margin. It doesn't make sense to, to score a basket. Uh, and that was courtesy. I thought it was good sportsmanship on Benji's part. Yeah, Benji Bell, let's uh, visit with Benji right now. First off, Benji, how did you end up at Florida State? Well, it started off at Junior College. Um, it was getting close to the end of the season. Uh, me and my teammates, we used to start playing well. I start scoring a lot of points, uh, making right decisions, and uh, Coach CY had called me. Uh, Coach Stan Jones called me. They told me that they see me at the state tournament that was in Ocala, Florida. They told me that they like what they see and asked me was I interested. And of course, I was interested in Florida State because I always liked the Florida State. And uh, after after we won the national tournament, I came down, took a visit, and I just loved it first on first sight. And I committed and signed right away. What was the junior college experience like for you? Um, the experience was great. Now, the fans, they love me because, uh, you know, I won a national championship there. And plus, my freshman year, I did pretty good, too. And uh, it was just a great experience, uh, just getting better at what I wasn't better, what, what I wasn't good at. Just being able to have a chance to play Division I, it was, it was great. Like you said, you won a national championship. Very few players can, can say that. What was that experience like I mean, to, to, to win a, a title? Uh, that experience was great. Uh, it took a long, I mean, it was a long season. 
a lot of like heart attacks because I didn't know what was going to happen some games, but uh, it was me and my teammates, we just stuck it through. I prayed and I was just like, I'm just going to leave it all out there on the floor. And it was just a great experience going down there in uh, Hutchinson, Kansas and win a national championship for Northwest Florida State. When did you realize growing up that, that basketball was something that you're good enough at that you could get a scholarship and, and play in college? Um, growing, growing up, I, I didn't really have like a lot of looks, but my brother, my oldest brother, who uh, played in the NFL, he always told me that you just put the time in, pray to God that everything will work out. I just kept believing, 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 even though I went to like, my road to here is probably very different than the other players, but you know, I just kept believing and just kept working on my game and you know, I'm here. Did you always play basketball or did you try to follow in your older brother's footsteps uh, I, and play football? I played, growing up I played a lot of sports. I played baseball, I played soccer, uh, you know, basketball, football. That was just pretty much my main sports right there. But then at, once I got to um, high school, I just stopped everything else and just focus on basketball. I see you've got a, a lot of ink. Do you have anything meaningful? Something really um, mean stuff to you? This one right here is for my brother. Uh, he had passed away in 2007. And uh, I got this like my 12th grade year. And then everything else is just, just pertaining to him, you know, so. He played basketball too. He was number one in the state of Florida his 11th grade year. I just want to just carry on the torch. And what's it like playing with such a, a, a talented class that you come in with? Guys like Bacon and Beasley and Mann and just a lot of excitement around this program. Is it fun playing with those guys? They seem like they have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's great playing with those guys. Um, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to, to play with those guys, be at Florida State. Um, I know that those guys are going to do well after Florida State and I'm just I'm just thankful to be a part of this team. And I mean, you've, you've, you've won a title at the junior college level. What would it mean to, to have similar success at Florida State and, and be a part of something special? It would be great. You know, it'll just let everybody know that I'm a winner. Wherever I go, uh, we will win. We'll, like, put one of those banners up. Everywhere I go, I put banners up, and that's what I'm trying to do here. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. And Coach, we were in Syracuse, New York earlier this week, a Thursday night game, and uh, snow everywhere, 10 degree temperatures, and I made the comment on our pregame show, I was thankful that Dr. Naismith had been at a game you played indoors because you could not be outside in that what kind of weather. <laughs> well, there's no doubt that it was cold. Uh, <laughs> and unfortunately, we were cold too. Uh, and uh, Syracuse was hot. You know, they played like a, a veteran team. Uh, they got off to a good start. We, we did not have an answer for them defensively. Uh, we we kind of kept pace. We got down by a large margin in the first half. Uh, we were able to, even though we were making shots, I, I didn't think we executed uh, our zone offense very well at all. We hit a couple of threes, uh, but that's kind of fool's goal. But we did not get into the interior of the defense. For whatever reason, we just could not get the offensive rhythm that it takes to, to win and be successful on the road. Again, playing against a good, re well-rested, experienced team like Syracuse. Yeah, nine-day layoff for the Syracuse Orange. It looked like they had a little more spring in their legs than uh, we did. And we, you know, it's the grind of ACC basketball. We have up four lead changes early in the ball game, but uh, all of a sudden Syracuse goes over. They build a 14-point lead. It seems like we're always trying to scratch back from be behind in this game. In this particular game, I just thought that they had our number. They moved the ball very well. They, they, they moved the ball. They were one-on-one. -on -one. They, they made every, it seemed like almost every open look that they had. They were what, five or 10 from three. They shot 50% from three-point range. You know, we, we gave a, a pretty good effort there in the first half by putting ourselves back in the game. We cut the lead down to four at halftime. I felt very fortunate that we were only down four when they had played as well as they played and shot the ball as well as they had had during the first half. You watch that Syracuse 2-3 zone, Coach. That's what they play. They've been playing, I think, since about 1907. But they, the, the zone defense presents problems to a lot of teams that go into the carrier dome. Well, here again, you got to give them credit. They had our number. They had... They, had, they were well rested. There's Bo. He put, given a, a good effort, but we just didn't have enough of those kind of plays. Watch another look at the rebound by Boris Bojanovski. He's battled a pretty big player, that number 32, Dewan Coleman. Now that's how you attack the zone defense, isn't it, Coach? We just didn't have enough of those. We didn't get the ball inside, below the free throw line e enough. Uh, we had some, some plays where I thought that we played pretty well, but 
We're a better basketball team, I think, than what we we played. Uh, we just did not execute and play stick with the game plan. And then I thought our defense was somewhat lethargic. Yeah, uh, attacking that two-three zone, you can penetrate the lane, and XRM does just that. He was playing in front of family at the uh, game. His family from Toronto came down to watch him play. Well, we just didn't have enough of these kind of plays, and and uh, we made some individual plays. I just was disappointed that we didn't make plays for each other. And, and when you're playing at, at this level, you got to create opportunity for each other, and we didn't do enough of that. Another assist by Xavier Raton Mays and a nice finish by Jarquez Smith. He needs to play a few more minutes, but he keeps getting in foul trouble, doesn't he? Well, I, I, this was one of those games where it, we, 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 it was a team loss. You know, here, we got a rebound, we got the ball inside again. And, and here, we're down six with, with eight seconds to go, and we make a play here at the end. X finds uh, uh, Devin, Booker, Devin Booker, and we knock down a three. Uh, we go into halftime. We felt that as well as they had played and as poorly as we had defended, we were very fortunate to only be down three, but we came out the second half. We just could not come, rejuvenate that same level of execution that we did the latter part of the first half. With less than a second left, Devin Booker's buzzer beater makes it a three-point ball game. In the second half, they get score six unanswered points before we get on track. Well, that, that was the unfortunate, and, and, we, and we never recovered from that point. FSU battling a Syracuse zone defense, a good interior pass, ball fake. We just didn't. We didn't get enough of those plays, and, and, and all week long we had practiced getting the ball in those seams. We just didn't have enough of those type of plays. Great ball fake by by Jaquez. You know he's he's really improving. He's learned a little bit more about how to play within himself. Uh, we make a couple of baskets here, and uh, where we, the game just wasn't, wasn't out of hand. But we thought right there they just had a lot better awareness of where they were and what they were doing. We made a couple of plays here. But defensively is where we fell short. They shot 60% of the floor. I'm not real sure I ever remember being in a game where a team is shot that well from the floor. And you got to give them credit. Uh, we got to take some of the blame. But I think more than anything else, it's, it's hard to shoot 60% if you're in the gym by yourself and, and with nobody guarding you. And, and they shot 60% on us while we were trying to defend them. Yeah, 62% from the floor. They were incredible in the first half from beyond the arc. And uh, we, we, like I said, we're battling behind the entire ball game. They build eventually a 20 plus point lead, but the kids never quit coach. I mean, we're down 24, po uh, 24 points with two and a half minutes to go. Well, here again, we did we, we, it just, they just outplayed us, uh, that Gene. There's no doubt that they're a good basketball team. And we played just a half a step slow. You know, maybe we played like we played a lot, uh, what was it, three games in, in, in eight yeah. days. I mean, that's where we played, and they played like they had been rested for nine days. You know, so it's, here we are battling, still trying to uh, have that old Seminole spirit. There's no doubt that we, we battled right down to the end, taking the ball to the basket. We're down 20 for a minute to go. Uh, Devin has given us big effort. Here again, we, we, we're trying to make sure that we this, this com com continue to keep competing. Uh, uh, 13 point loss, but actually, be very honest with you, it could have been a lot larger. Uh, they tried to, when you look up and see that they shot for 62%, uh, you see they shot 47% from three. We shoot 30% from three and 57% from the free throw line. That's not the Seminole team that we, we've grown to know. Yeah, we forced 20 turnovers, and that's a season high for Syracuse. They averaged about 11 and a half turnovers a ball game. So the defense was picking the pocket and doing good things. But uh, Devin Booker, for the first time his senior season, he leads us in scoring with 15 points. He had a tremendous game. Well, here again, that zone defense is not easy to crack. Now, there's no mm -hmm. doubt about that. A lot of people will. But we, I thought we've been successful against that zone uh, that system in the past. Unfortunately, defensively, I thought where we let ourselves down. We just didn't defend a hot shooting team, and you're – Teams in the ACC are not going to miss unless you make them miss. There will be no love on the court when the Miami Hurricanes come to town, even though it's Valentine's Day. We'll talk about the week ahead in just a moment. Welcome back to our show. And, you know, it's Valentine's Day weekend, Coach, but uh, I don't think there's going to be any love lost on the court Sunday at the Tucker Center when Miami comes to town. <laughs> Well, it's always a very competitive game. Um, Miami, uh, Florida State has competed in all sports, and uh, they are the 10th ranked team in the country coming in, and we're 6-6 six and six in our league. We're fighting for our uh, postseason tournament life uh, with a young and experienced team. We're in the period. We're right in between uh, four games and nine days. Uh, we got to find the energy that it takes to be successful against a really good basketball team. Uh, this, we're really going to find out what we're made of the, the, the last, uh, last, these upcoming games because we're right middle, in the middle of a very important period. 
You have two home games this week and one on the road, Miami Sunday, Georgia Tech Wednesday, and then up to Blacksburg, Virginia for a game against Tech. That's our show for this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at the Tucker Center for our next Florida State basketball game. Go Noles. This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show, brought to you by SunTrust. Learn how SunTrust can help you live for your sunny day at suntrust.com slash mysunnyday. And by Coke Zero. You don't know Zero till you've tried it.